So Fast and Furious has just been released in theaters and, and let me tell you, this movie is truly insane. But one thing that I was surprised about was that it was not as insane as the last movie. The last movie, they freaking went to space. So I expected that if they wanted to top that, they needed to what, race on the moon. Like that's literally what I said on another video a couple of days ago. But the thing is this movie really stepped up in terms of story. Um, the action wasn't really over the top like you would think they would go crazy for, especially from the last movie. And the villain was much more captivating than the last one. John Cena, I think he did a good job you know, in the last movie, but I don't think they wanted him to play that vicious of a villain. I think because they wanted to turn him by the end of the movie, that's why we got what we got. But when you look at this villain, Jesse Momoa's character, Dante, like this guy is freaking crazy. He's truly unhinged and the better parts of this movie. So let's crack down and see some of the truly insane moments, the crazy stunts and reviews, cameos and behind the scenes stuff of Fast X. Starting at number 9, of Letty vs. Cypher. The Fast and Furious is not only known for its crazy car stunts and car, you know, car fool as I like to call it, but their fight scenes are always so entertaining and so brutal to watch. And this was no exception. The choreography was just on point with every hit, every throw just felt vicious. These two badass ladies really pulled off a very crazy fight scene in my opinion. And with the behind the scenes showing that these two actresses are the ones actually pulling this of that's even more impressive at number eight you have dante versus cypher though this was not a fight scene between them it's still a fight when you think about it but just in a different way this scene is where we are introduced to dante this mental character that we get to see throughout the movie how insane he is and this is the first time we see that now nah, this guy is truly a different villain in the fast and furious franchise from the way he talks his demeanor like you will not think that this guy is one a truly insane human being but as the layers are peeled you get to see that yeah it stinks i can't believe i'm gonna race the great dominic toretto i have butterflies this guy walked in took over cypher's man after you know blackmailing all their family members shooting the gun guy who didn't have any family and then just walking out casually and then we see cypher also in her element of course she always has a plan but this time it was to kick some ass and get the hell out of there this scene reminded me of atomic blonde and old guard which she starred in i feel like when you have charlie steron in an action sequence and the choreography is on point it's going to be truly incredible and this was at number seven, you have the opening scenes, the opening flashback scenes, Too Fast Five. The movie, I think, is the best of the Fast and Furious franchise. Man, was it really good to see Paul Walker again, R.I.P. This flashback was used to tie the story and the character to this movie. Essentially, the origin of the villain and his motivation, the reason why he's after Dom Toretto. And the director came out recently and talked about how they used some deleted scenes and some alternate takes to make this scene actually possible. Some of the shots are actually the same from the movie back then but half of it or should i say most of it was the deleted ones and they actually i think did a pretty good job blending all those scenes putting the characters in making it feel like the characters were already there in the first place and it was a wonderful throwback to see for the incredible stunts and especially to seeing paul walker again at number six, we have Dante's highway attack. This movie just made Jesse Momoa's character just so relentless and, and straight up effed up crazy. From attacking the convoy that Dom Toretto was in after his arrest, to even when he was cornered and Dom beat the piss out of him, he still was his usual self, just all dandy and roses. And the scene alone reminds me of Green Goblin in Spider-Man No Way Home. The first fight scene between Norman Osborn and Tom Holland's Peter Parker Spider-Man. The shocking parts, not even counting the two that he pulled out and threw it at Dom, was when everything just turned around in his favor. He had even planned for all this with a sniper shooting aims, tests, and taking a gauze eye. And the thing is, he could have killed Dom right there and then, but he didn't because what he wanted to torture him more. That's how freaking insane this guy is. At number five, we have Dante and the Dead. That truly disturbing scene i don't even know how to talk about it the scene opens up with dante painting someone's nails we don't see the person but then the camera starts to reveal the shot and then oh my freaking god 
it's two guys that he actually killed. He tortured them first, you know, for information and all that. And then did all that to their face, opened their eyes and everything. What's even worse? I mean, as if it could. But this guy was having full conversations with these dead bodies. Whilst draining all the money from Dom's crew's banks. Jesse Momoa shared a behind the scenes picture on Instagram. Just to top off this disturbing scene. On the fourth spot, we have Jacob's death. Like, damn. Did not see this coming, but I guess when you think about how this is the first of the two finale parts, I guess they wanted to create a loss in the first family. Jacob was the one sacrificing himself for his older brother. But the thing is, is he actually dead? Or did they make it seem or look that way? Because he, he looks pretty dead to me with how the scene went. But when you think about how all the other deaths in the first family have just been retconned, some characters have been brought back. I'll talk about that later in the list. It just makes this scene like the emotional impacts that this scene would have had. At number three, we have the cameos. One of the jaw opening moments in this movie was seeing Gal Gadot's Giselle pop up out of the submarine at the end of the movie. Like, what the hell? Because the last time we saw her, yeah, she was pretty much dead, saving Han in the Fast and Furious 6 movie. Han, the same guy who was also dead in Tokyo Drift and came back in the last movie. Now, both of them, this couple in the Fast and Furious franchise are now both alive and I just can't wait to see when they reunite in the next movie. Another crazy cameo that we never thought we'd ever see again is The Rock's Luke Hobbs, who had his own spin-off movie with Jason Statham's show. But we all know, at least some fans know about the feud between Dwayne Johnson and Vin Diesel. Vin actually reached out, I think, the last movie or so, making a public request for you know Dwayne Johnson to appear in this movie. But The Rock also declined and talked about how it was manipulative for him to use you know the media to you know do this. And he made his point clear about not appearing ever again in the Fast and Furious movie. But there he is now with Dante, who has also set his sights on him. Because in Fast Five, if you remember clearly, he's the one who actually delivered the killing blow. So it makes sense for Dante to come after him and everyone he cares about who we got introduced to in a spin-off movie. Another great cameo was from Paul Walker's daughter, Miedo. I, I feel like I was happy when I saw her. I was like, man, your father will be so proud of you. Because the first family has always been about family. So what more is there than to have, you know, the daughter of the person who very much adored this franchise to be in this movie as well. Pete Davidson also made a cameo. It seems like this guy also like popping up in different places where you don't expect him to. So very big cameos. It seems like when you die in the Fast and Furious universe, you can be brought back at any time that they want. And of course, I'm still excited though. I can't wait to see them in the next movie. At the second spot, we have the ball scene in Rome, truly showing how vicious and crazy and over the top and the great length that Dante will go to just to get to Dom Toretto, branding him and his crew terrorists. The Fast and Furious have always been known to, you know, have these bombastic car scenes, car action, you know, stunts, and over the top scenes with cars. The last movie we saw that with the cars and the magnets. And in this, we see this huge magnetic ball, which is a bomb, which Dante uses to cause destruction across room. The whole scene was just bonkers, with Dom trying to also stop the bomb, redirecting it to Letty and Dante's bike chase. Like, this, this was just truly incredible, and no other movie can actually do this. It's over the top insane stuff with cars except for the Fast and Furious franchise. Now at number one, we have the damn scene, the end scenes of this crazy ass movie. Every moment in this particular scene just left you shocked surprised and in disbelief from the moment dom drops down from a plane with his car to taking down the helicopters jacob's death i've already talked about that to little brian jumping out of dante's car to dom's car to dom driving off the dam that insane moment with the explosions and everything to aim's betrayal shooting rocket at the plane that ramsey Tej, han and roman are on and to the moment where dom thinks he and his son are safe sees all that happening and sees that the the dam is rigged to explode. Everything that happened on the bridge was planned by Dante. This is a vicious, sadistic, egotistical maniac. That's what you call a freaking villain. This is the first time in a Fast and Furious film where it ends on a cliffhanger. How is Dom and his son gonna get out of this? And what about Ramsey and the crew on the plane? Are they gonna die? Like these are some of the questions that we are left with the movie ending like this. But then again, we all know that, come on, they are not gonna kill these characters. But how they are all gonna get out of this situation, that we all can't wait to see. 
Now I have some three moments as bonuses. First, the Shaw and Hans reunion. I don't even know what to call it because <laughs> Shaw tried to kill this guy and now here he is. And we got a brief fight between them even though Han was not there to fight. But we did get some fight scenes with Shaw and Han briefly working together and seeing Shaw set off on his own mission to go and save and protect his mother who's on Dante's kill list. Next is Ames' betrayal. Never saw that coming. I think towards a certain point in the movie, we all told that, hey, he's going to come around and be the latest addition to the family. And of course, he did briefly until this moment when we realized that, hey, he's been with Dante the whole time and actually played dumb. That was actually a good twist. And lastly was little brian and jacob scenes they had a good dynamic and chemistry you know the fun uncle that you know jacob has now become and their scenes together were fun now that's it for the list um this movie was crazy the plot was simple revenge and that's what we got the fast and furious movies have not been known for you know it's intricate storyline or plot it's all about family it's all about races it's all about cars it's all about the crazy action and set pieces that they have now evolved into don't know if i've said it in the intro but instead of the two-part finale to end this franchise we've got this one it's now left with one it seems like we may get a third movie i can say this they said could you make fast x the finale a trilogy it's three acts in any yeah, story. Yeah. You and Tom Cruise at the Miami Grand Prix. What were you talking about? Are you going to do a movie together? Oh, <laughs> so it looks like the next two films may be going crazier. Imagine getting Tom Cruise. Plus, Alan Ritchie, who plays Ames, also revealed some stuff about how Keanu Reeves was the one who was supposed to play his character. But certain factors did not allow that, whether it was negotiations or maybe time. Uh, you know schedule and all that but <laughs> we got what we got plus they even wanted him to be the villain in hops and Shaw, the spin-off but you know that also didn't happen so maybe in future movies perhaps the next two movies vin diesel also revealed recently that they were going to be spin-offs as soon as this main saga ends specifying even the female-led one so yeah there's still going to be more movies even after this saga ends all in all, this movie was cool. We all watch it for the crazy and the crazy action and whatever next they're going to cook up with all the spectacle and all that. But anyway, Dante, played by Jesse Momoa, was pretty much fantastic. I think he was one of the best parts of the movie. And the other newer cast too, I think they also did good. Now, I have a video that I posted a couple of days ago about some of the insane and ridiculous stunts and moments that are in the Fast and Furious franchise. You can check that video out. And also do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and what are your expectations for the next movie and please leave a like it helps the channel out subscribe and turn on that post notification bell not to miss any new video as always nearly say see you guys in the next one